Hello my people and welcome back to Freedom Forest. In today's episode we're going to be looking at some of the many jobs I'm always embarking on here at Freedom Forest. There's always a million and one projects on the go and we're normally showing you mainly just the gardening stuff we do. So, hope you enjoy. One of the jobs we've been up to over the last few months is renovating one of the old shed buildings that were on the land. It was clad with corrugated sheets which a lot of them had rusted through and they've definitely seen better days. We'll hopefully be able to salvage a few of them though to make a composting bin later. I was out on a belt one day and saw some builders pulling off some cladding from an old building and chucking it straight on the fire. So I pulled up and asked if I could have it. And there's some worm-eaten bits and rotten bits, but I cut those off first and then sanded it down and it's actually come up really nice. Laurie and I spent a couple of days matching up the sizes and cutting them to lengths and we were really pleased with the final result. Especially when buying these boards, they're about £25 each now. I just love the look of that traditional live wany edge. Our neighbour helped us bring in a couple of new rainwater collection tanks as well. It was a bit tricky working out how to get it over the fence, but I built a wooden structure. My parents came over to give us a hand, and we managed to reverse it down with a rope tied to the van and roll it down slowly. There's an area of the land which I've been planting up with hazel over the last six or seven years. And I've got these mainly for free when they've been self-seeded in people's gardens who I do gardening work for. This year I decided to add to that by buying some.
I really love the look of coppice stools of hazel when they've got the tens of different shoots coming up, almost like clumps of bamboo. And when I dig these up, because it's often not in the ideal time of year, I always cut them off right at the base, above the nearest bud I can see. And I've never yet had one die on me, and they grow back straight away with multiple shoots, giving that beautiful coppiced look. Alright guys, it's also the time where we're thinking about getting all the beds ready now um, and what we're going to be planting in each. Laurie's been doing a nice um, bed plan, she's a lot more organised than me. I tend to deal with mainly all the tubers so I kind of have them in the ground already which is quite cool. But my main thing is the corn and over here is the bed we had the blue Hopi in last year on the village green. and. I've got some bags of compost here ready to go, but as you can see from last year, if I zoom you in a bit now, we still have all of our corn stalks as a mulch on the floor there, um, and it's kept it pretty much completely weed free. And this year we're going to be doing the popcorn in there, the glass gem popcorn. And of course I'll be doing um, some more videos on our progress of that this year. Um, but one of the things I've decided to do is just select the pink kernels this year. So I'm going to be trying to start a pink variety of popcorn, which is quite cool. So we've just come through here now, through the forest. Laurie is in here at a little bed we've been making, or I say bed, more a little bit in the forest that we've dedicated to mushrooms. And I've been doing some tree planting. Um, well, I have been doing some tree planting, but some tree pruning as well over winter. And some of the oak and birch logs are perfect for some of the edible and medicinal types of... Oh, looks like a female pheasant's been killed there by something. Quite a few foxes around here. Yeah, sorry about that. A bit distracted there. So the birch and the oak are quite good uh, to impregnate with the, I don't know if impregnate is the right word, but with the spores of certain varieties of edible medicinal mushrooms. And here she is. So we've got some piles of these here. And you can see on some of these, they're actually the spores or the kind of Laurie knows more about this than me, but it's starting to kind of take hold throughout the wood and hopefully they'll be bursting out soon with life. It's another good example on here. See how they're coming in? And I'm sure Laurie can show us in a minute, but you put these little plugs in and you can see each place where there's a plug that I'm not sure whether it's mycelium or whether you just call it fungi is working its way down into the wood, which is really cool. It is mycelium, is it? Yeah, you can see it's always the easiest to see when the um, mushrooms start to spread through the log. Yeah, so what, what varieties have you got going on here then? Uh, this is reishi that I'm just doing here, and yeah, those ones that you can see really clearly in the end of the log are shiitakes. Shiitakes, wow. And are they both edible ones or medicinal? Um, Reishi is medicinal, shiitake is um, edible, but obviously they're all edible, some of them just taste better than others. Cool, Some cool. of them taste like boot leather apparently, <laughs> but some of them you might like to cook in your dinner. 
And you're going to be doing a video on this, aren't you, soon? Yep. Showing what you've been up to. Yep. Laurie got me some new drill bits for my birthday and uh, she's been quick to steal some of those off me. I think she had other plans for those. Actually, this is one of the old ones. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, basically, we won't go into it with too much detail now because Laurie will be doing a video on this, but you can see some of these... Plugs. Plugs that she's knocking in. And they're impregnated inoculated. with the spores. Inoculated. Ah, inoculated. I said impregnated a minute ago. And then this in here is the wax that she uses to then seal it off afterwards. So that's pretty cool. And I think you can use multiple types of wood, but the hardwoods are better, like oak, for example, for certain varieties. Not all of them love all types of wood, but oak being quite rot resistant will last quite a long time. But one of the reasons I've been called up here is because some of these we did last year are drying out a bit and you're supposed to keep them fairly moist. So I'm going to be taking some of these oak ones and dropping them in the stream for a few hours just to soak up some more moisture. Right, I'm going to go and grab myself a wheelbarrow so I can do that. And apparently each pile there is a different variety. So I'm just going to do one today because um, otherwise they get mixed up. And she said they you're supposed to soak them for up to a couple of days, not just a couple of hours. This is quite beautiful through here while we're passing. This little area has got all sorts of native plants in here. Um, we call this area bird world because don't ask why, but my mum, we call my mum Birdie Bee and she plants some nice native plants in here. We've got the hellebores. I'm not sure actually if the purples are completely native, but um, I know some hellebores are native. Very pretty. All the daffodils are out now as well. And some lungworts as well there. And a lot of the ferns are now starting to unfurl their fronds. A spring must for us is walking in the local ancient woodlands and enjoying the spectacle of the wild garlic, ransoms and the bluebells, which is such a magical sight to see. And I've also been very busy creating some new no-dig beds for our no-dig potatoes. We're going to be doing the Sarpo virus and blight resistant varieties again. And we look forward to showing you that in one of the upcoming episodes. <laughs> 